Okay. Uh, Mr. Huffman, I think you should be here in a few minutes. Uh, the, the first two items in is the, the first item. Uh, Mr. Bateman has to leave in a few minutes, but is, is, is coming back to you from the previous work session as we continue to work on the water and sewer utility extension policy. And Mr. Ward had made a, a, a recommendation to go back in and, 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 and have a proposed ordinance change based on what we talked about. So, Mr. Bateman? Thank you, Harold. Mr. Council, Mr. Mayor, what we uh, looked at in the Ward pointed out we really need an ordinance change to try to do anything different about request the ward and sewer. What we've uh, presented to you for consideration is in section three of the existing 3730, which in effect puts into the ordinance form essential part of the policy that we talked about to allow the council to grant the authority to the city manager to give these Sense for people filing the same paperwork in the form, but only for certain uses, which are existing lots, existing structures, and then what it points out, no mobile home parks, no multi family structures. Now, the proposed subdivision of commercial industrial multi uses, all those continue to have to come to account for the full The routine stuff uh, still have to do the paperwork, still have to make the various requests for the Sunday Council. After we might go ahead and fix the services. We think that the problem is going to be more pressing and the ability to have more around the connector of the philosophy and the number of requests that are there. So that's where the solution Questions or comments to Mr. Bacon? Yes, I've got one to add. Charles, which is proposed on the I'd like to add existing. Yeah, the only, the only um, yeah, let me just make one comment about that. If we have, you may have a water line, for example, let's talk about Mac and, and Macintosh, but to clean out the highway center. Uh, that's a subdivision, it's a different subdivision. It has our water lines in there, and we've already made deals with them to allow those people to be cold. Right. So that, that, we, we struggle with the same thing you're talking about. In that case,
today from the mayor of Ossipee concerning the uh, local government commission is asked for uh, the, the rates we'll be charging Ossipee, but also uh, an interesting question. It's a 20 year proposed agreement, and what happened at the 20 years? And it's like all of our agreements can be negotiated at that particular point in time. And we've got information to them, and, and then they'll be going forward. With, with a new agreement, is that what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They, the part of the, the loan process or the grant process, the local government commission had to approve it. Right. So, with the new agreement, the proposed agreement is a 20 year term to the OSP right. agreement. And they want to know after 20 years what would happen. Oh. And we, we normally just contact the municipality and negotiate over an extension at the appropriate time at the end of that 20 years. That's where we're going now. Uh, if we could, uh, Shauna, since we've got people from out of town, can we move yeah. you guys up? Be yeah. better.
and we will also be providing them the final documents and sometime in June. There will be a couple of online surveys that will be part of the process. One for municipal leaders, primarily elected leaders, city managers, um, and the like, and then also one for stakeholders, those that we have interviewed as well as others that we have identified but have not been able to interview. And we'll use their feedback as part of our um, analysis for the document. Does anyone have any questions? What about our Chodo Levy part of the interview process? Yes, they will be coming, I think, on Wednesday. I'm at the County Community Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sean, you got anything to add? No, we're just really excited and looking forward to the report. Our last one um, was completed <coughs> in 2010, so we're going to have to, we would have to have an update regardless. So um, HUD's requested that um, our 2010 report be updated through the Fair Office of Fair Housing. So this is going to meet that requirement for the upcoming year. And in reference to funding levels next year, we don't know, but our projections are? About the same as they were last year. We should receive notification in March. Which was up compared to what we thought at the beginning, right? Yes, it was up from what we thought it was going to be at the beginning. We ran, we were kind of running on a um, 15 to 20% reduction last year, but it we were about the same. But one quick question. Yes. When is the final report due now? June. June. And then it'll June. be a completely finalized August, I think. Right, yeah. and there'll, there'll be um, a time for public meetings, I think sometime maybe in August, and then I'll be coming back to the city council probably in September, I think we've, we've tentatively said that. We'll be back here. Yes. Yes. Any other comments, guys? Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Sure. <coughs> At the uh, February work session, um, Amy and, and, and staff Again, discussion concerning the ordinance for food truck. Uh, really, it's not really, really a revision. It's establishing an ordinance or policy based on the use of food trucks. And um, there was a significant amount of discussion. And if I recall correctly, you guys had asked us to come back with uh, some revisions of that and uh, maybe a better explanation of what we're attempting to do. So, Amy? Thank you. Um, we have a few revisions to what we're presented last time. They're fairly minor. We, um, we've gone over the uh, insurance and the uh, annual application fee, which will be uh, $100, in addition to the privilege license, which will be a, a peddler's. Um, this whole thing is classified under peddler's. Um, we are going to require um, submission of all their proof of uh, liability, insurance, uh, health department inspections, everything when they go upstairs to get their permit. Um, we have slightly adjusted the um, requirements for distancing. We have 100 feet uh, required from schools, <coughs> churches, and cemeteries. And we have 75 feet as a requirement from the front door of any um, existing restaurant, a brick and mortar restaurant, uh, during their business hours. We still have the parking requirements in place, um, still just one per block. Push carts cannot be on city streets unless they've been closed for any day. What's, why 75 feet <coughs> versus 100? Well, 100 feet is the distancing from schools and churches and cemeteries. Um, 75 feet is kind of an average, it's a little higher than a lot of cities do. Most cities use uh, 50 feet, some use 25, some use 100, but most of them use 50. But we um, measured it out on uh, Google Maps and we were trying to get a good balance so that the brick and mortar restaurants wouldn't get too upset and it seems like that's a pretty good distance for them. They, they seem to, to be happy with do you have any communication with existing brick and mortar facilities? In yes, the city? yes. Ann Morris with the downtown organization went and spoke with the, the business owners, and they were they were fairly positive about it. They they liked having those restrictions in place. The, the original uh, proposal was 50 feet, and went from 50 to 75 feet since the last one. And you said that in your notes you said. Uh, 
a fee of $100? Yes, an annual, plus annual fee. An annual fee is 100 yes, plus the handler's fee? Yes, sir. And we, what is that? Is that subject to the privilege license in reference to uh, Harold? Yes, to that bill similar. The two together. Yeah. Yeah. Is that subject to be changed? Is what it is. Well, it depends on what we do, but we have the privilege license in the state legislature. Right. right. Okay. So my question again, I repeat myself. We have had communication with existing yes, brick and mortar places and you're telling us that everything is good with those guys. Yes, sir. Okay. You said one per block? One per block. That includes both sides of the street. It's considered one block. Yeah. Yeah. This is only doing uh, like a, a regular day right. and, and if, if there's a, 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 a festival or an event where the streets are blocked off. Then that changes. Right. Then you can have as many as you want. They can be in the middle of the street. They yeah. can have tables and chairs out. But okay. we're trying to keep that down. We don't have a whole lot of food trucks coming downtown right now. And this is fluid. We can adjust it as the popularity grows. Okay. Questions, guys? What's back <clears throat> Who will be administering this order? It will be. We have written it. It will be um, the monies and everything taken upstairs and tax. And then as far as any enforcement goes, this is under peddlers. And that falls under the police department. Yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just thankful right? you're finished eating. I guess I'll need a few new cops then. <laughs> Not very many of them. I need a clock of food truck out of regular right? yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for Amy? Did you get your name? Yeah. Okay. You good? Thank you, Amy. Oh, uh, is this something, let me back up a second. Is this something that needs to be on the agenda for tomorrow night, or we wait to the second meeting in March? <clears throat> we can wait to the second meeting in March. Okay, that's fine. All right. Next, Eric. As uh, I indicated, it, it, again, in the February uh, work session, we have uh, are continuing to deal with a, a significant more special event request, which uh, requires a various aspect of city activity from potentially blocking streets to uh, using public works to parks and recreation activity to public safety <coughs> involvement. Um, so as a staff, in the last 60 days, we've been working on a, uh, a policy, but really more of an application process, how we would handle these events, uh, and then how it can be monitored and tracked in reference to uh, what goes on. So we want these events to be successful. And, and often people who, who, who ask to do this, they really mean well, they really don't have much experience in the area. and. Uh, some issues do come up at, at, at various times. We're trying to, to guard against that. So uh, I've asked uh, Recreation uh, to, to kind of lead this. We have uh, met with uh, representatives of Public Works, police. Uh, we've had uh, uh, Charles has been involved from, from the legal side. We've had Frank involved from the, the collection side. Um, Peggy has been involved working with liability put this particular policy together or, or package together. So I think you should have got that in the package. It's about a 15-page document, I believe. So, so Lisa Wolf's here tonight to, to review this and kind of give us kind of where, where, where we came from and hopefully where we're going to go with this. Thank you, Harold. Thank you all for letting us present um, what we feel is a pretty good um, representation of where we want to go um, in the city when it comes to event requests. Um, as many of you all know, we have numerous requests on an annual basis. It could be anything from the United Way functions to Taste of Owlman's to um, a neighborhood cookout. And we felt like this um, document, with, like Harold said, with the, it, was very, it was a great collaboration of a lot of our staff. Reed Matters from Police, Chief, thank you. Peggy Charles um, and Mary Fawcett over here next to Tony. And let me introduce to you Morgan Lassiter. Um, Morgan is in the Special Events Division too. Some of you all probably know her mom. Her mom is Lynn Cowan, so she's been involved in the city in different aspects of planning in previous years. But um, anyway, moving forward, we um, came up with this document. Now we're still, it's not finalized at this point, but we feel like um, if 
it's a pretty good representation. So I don't know, Harold, do you want me to go through page by page or just, I just highlight? Highlight. highlights? We call it a quick overview. Uh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, hopefully you had time to take a look at it yeah, and kind have. of review it. Um, it's broken down into these different sessions. It's basically the street for, for street closings, um, request event guidelines that um, have event with alcohol involved. Um, the insurance requirements, and then uh, Reed was very instrumental in helping us work through the alcohol management through uh, the recommendations from the local agency commissions, and then we have the actual application. So basically, it goes through the whole process of how we go about street closing. Um, everything, of course, per year decision would be um, a council approval for a large event. Um, neighbor, small neighborhood streets would remain um, at the discretion of the city manager's office. All of this will be funneled through our department. So, um, for instance, in Milwaukee here, we get a phone call from um, Red Cross wanting to do the Taste of Alamance, the phone call would come to me, or it might come to Harold's office first and funnel down to me. We will walk them through the process to help them make sure all these bases are covered across the board. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. These, this page came from um, Alan Crouch regarding the insurance requirements for the city when it comes to hosting an event with alcohol. Um, and we'll, we'll add a couple little things here and there that tell you this is, it takes you through the process of the alcohol management. This is all um, very detailed. It goes as far as saying you can only dispense by a certain ounce of cup, um, no open glass containers, the smart serving through the ABC Commission for anybody um, that's hosting the event or serving it. <clears throat> and then it goes into the actual application process. So you've got um, the main page of the application. We have festival celebration, procession, march run, exhibits. So it's broken down because we have everything from 5K runs, which are a numerous category. And at the top, we have a checklist where we've got various um, you know, people who need to know about these events. So we'll, we'll be clearing this through police, fire, um, the, and public works, as well as anybody else that we feel like once we get through the process are important to have a role in, or at least be aware of what's going on. Um, I don't know if you want me to... Does anybody have any questions so far about where we're going with this, or? What you sign for if you want? Well, I mean, I think that's probably open for discussion. I think it's, we're, I feel like we're pretty close. Peggy and I had a conversation today. Um, we met with Harold and, Chip and Charles last Wednesday to go through some finalization of some of the legal um, phrasing and things in it. But uh, Harold, what would you say with this? Well, the council, the, the council is certainly probably the need to, to review this. We can certainly uh, go two weeks to a month if you need to. You want to go through this? I, I, I want to have the application. I mean, I've been through it. And, and I, I like the application. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of work. But, you know, having been around here, I know. I mean, this is good to have all this down. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, it's just on a piecemeal one. Right. Case-by-case so, case basis. What? It was a case-by-case case basis, yeah. usually. Yeah, this, you know, it, it, it's really good. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we made it for some time, but I just want to look back through it if we have more time. So. Sure. Yeah, my, my question is, uh, say, if my, say, an example, if I wanted my neighborhood watch group to, to use uh, the Eva Baker area on you know, Main Street, mm -hmm. and do I, would my group have to fill this out? Or? Um, it's not necessary. Well, it depends on what your best could be, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if you're closing streets, you're going to have... No, just a picnic. Right. Yeah. Just a picnic in the park. Yeah. No. I think staff can walk people through yeah. some of this and, and get through some of the uh, more challenging parts, but uh, um, as we have had more unusual requests, there are areas which I'm not sure we were uh, we had the, the needed information on. <coughs> Uh, get an understanding of who's going to do what uh, and 
especially if something occurred during the event itself, if power went down, uh, if uh, there's a problem with some utility, uh, just how we would handle what we did with the so. And just um, in reference to staffing, we, um, you know, and this is certainly, I guess, up for you guys to decide or for us or guide us in the direction that you feel. Um, we did have a discussion about whether or not it was important to have a staff person at these large events. Just for the very reason what Harold said in reference to the power um, goes down, who in the city needs to be called, um, if there's an emergency, those types of things. Now, of course, police are incorporated into this document, so there will be you know, requirements that they have to meet that. Um, in, our, in our fees and charges program right now that we have, for the Recreation Parks Department. We do have a fee structure for large outdoor events that are in the parks. Um, so we we did discuss that a little bit, um, and that's really, I guess, up to you guys to, or to lead us in the direction that you feel if there's a fee that should be affiliated with this. Well, quick question here, and I would say, Um, and then where we are now, we met with um, 
and the downtown corporations and the board members and came to the realization that, you know what, this needs to be a collaborative effort. Ann's out there promoting um, downtown economic development and events go hand in hand, so we are um, together forming a collaboration and a partnership to continue the strength of events and, and additional programming. Now, as it stands, we have the downtown spectacular Halloween, we have active city streets, which will be coming up here this spring, the musical chairs, the parade, holiday magic, which you all know is very successful, the fourth Fridays, and all of the events at the theater. And what does it take to make it work? Well, it's not just recreation and parks, it's not just the downtown corporation, it's the city, okay? Um, and it's other divisions within the city. We, we for, for instance, when we have um, an event, we're contacting public works in reference to numerous things, from sanitation to street barricades, um, to power requirements that we might need out on the streets, to pull from poles, if possible, uh, as well as working with some of the businesses. I mean, LabCorp has worked collectively with us, especially at Dickens Christmas events, um, to allow us to pull some of their power from their facilities for these events. Um, so it's a great effort. And then along with that also, we have public safety that's involved with our events. Um, we've got to have police officers downtown, whether they are serving alcohol or whether it's just an event where streets are closed um, for the safety of the citizens. And in there. So here's a little bit um, of timeline of where we've come to from and where we're going. Um, last year, Ann's group did completed this, uh, the 2013 community-wide survey, as you all know. Then, in March and May, they had the brainstorming sessions that were held downtown. I know a few of you council members attended um, those, and those were held at Sarian Photography. I think there were two of them, right? Um, <clears throat> and the results of those meetings, as well as the surveys, came to um, more nightlife and live music festivals, beautification, and the making of dog-friendly community in the downtown area. And so now, this is where we are now. It's winter 2013, as you can tell from outside. Um, and we're collaborating and planning events for downtown as we go forward. Now, you're probably going to wonder what these events are. Well, we didn't want to come right out and say, well, we're going to plan some event on April the 1st every year or St. Patrick's Day event. We know that it's going to take some time and effort to put into it and get some input from the community as well. So at your direction, we basically are saying um, we're going to basically solicit continued public involvement in the planning process and make that a priority of the event planning. Um, we're going to work together on the event planning for downtown with the BDC. As you said, you heard 2013 was a very successful year based on the survey feedback as well as the participation of people that were there at those events and these three events. For uh, some of the key events, dog friendly. <laughs> um, we're going to continue to evaluate the existing events in um, cooperation with what's to come um, in new events. To foster, maintain the engaged downtown property and business owners. That's an important piece we know. It's not just the property owners, but it's the business owners as well. Maintain the communication with all city departments so that um, we can all be on the same page. We need to know how many garbage cans need to be, need to be down there as part of the Special event manual, we also have sanitation things as far as um, restrooms, the number of restrooms that are going to be required or recommended. Uh, and then evaluate existing locations and facilities, so the depot, the parking lots, um, for future needs and demands for programming and services such as the Paramount Theater and the depot. Um, what are ways, what, are, what other areas out there that we can work together to improve either the location, the facility, um, et cetera. So this is what we want our events to generate. The buzz, the town talk, being energized, the skinny, opportunities to be, um, the rumor rumble, and be engaged. Because if we don't, we're just kind of going on status quo. So this will just kind of go through a couple of pictures of some of the events this past year. This was the Active City Streets event, CMS demonstration, the demonstration. LA the theater. Co-ops events. This was the fourth 
Friday's concert. And the diversity of programming that we have downtown an opportunity. Any questions or comments? If, if I could, this this is a I think the star of something that Council might, might want to consider long term is um, uh, certainly we believe that we can uh, add to the um, number of events that people came down. If, if some of you all at the, at the Christmas event had several people come up to me and so they saw people downtown that I lived here. Um, the concept is simply that uh, is, is, get a, is get as much diversified group as we can downtown a number of events. We've talked to, to Parks and Rec about the Paramount. Paramount's established uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, performing arts use and, and it was possible to put forth in terms of reservations for, for major shows and there's some challenges there. But certainly even theater, I think the, the, uh, the use can be diversified from a, from a speaking series to uh, to a number of, of different opportunities that hopefully can diversify the use of the theater. The depot is, uh, is an interesting building. The green area behind is an interesting building. Uh, there's some opportunities uh, if, if uh, I think, busted to make the consider warrants and some consideration about some structural changes there that might could, could, uh, produce a facility that uh, would be a little bit more user friendly in terms of crowds, um, uh, where we could do some work out there. We have the property. That's the most important thing. And we got some, some base ideas on that, but I think we're certainly not ready to do anything about nature yet. But I believe uh, this is a trend that's just certainly not here. It's, 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 as Ann has said, it's across the state and the country. Um, it's a, a downtown, we can say it's a certainly unusual site, <coughs> not considered east or west. Um, and there's, uh, I believe, uh, Matt Wellesley, uh, Matt and Wellesley was in the office today. Uh, their development, talking about their development on Front Street, uh, which is continuing. Um, we think there is uh, some momentum there, but I think this would be certainly a, an opportunity for the city to help, help and aid that momentum for, for with the existing businesses, um, and also just uh, providing some opportunities for families of all ages and makeups to, to attend these functions. I don't know how many of y'all went to the theater this weekend. I know, I think I, Dave told me that. Joe, are you there? I was there. Right to see the show. Um, Dave told me this morning that there, I think we had 2,900 people run through the theater for the show this weekend. Is that right, Mary? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, in our concept of thought process is when we, when we renovated the Paramount Theater, we, the purpose, the mission was that it was a multi-purpose facility. Everything from local theatrical groups to programming from our, our side of things. Um, there are some things that we're, we're in the process of revisiting. For instance, when a theater um, group like the Gallery or the Children's Theater reserve the theater, they're reserving it two years in advance, up to two years in advance for a future date or a show. There's different components to that piece. Um, our understanding is it could be playwright requests when you have to send off the playwrights, you have to give specific dates of those requests. So we're trying to work around some of those challenges and revisit the best way to handle that. Um, we do have some ideas of some programming concepts, maybe, um, like Harold said, speaker session. Uh, one of the ideas is teaming up with the co-op and WUNC radio and do something um, related to a speaker series with um, maybe vendors and brewers since the, the beer co-op's coming about. So we've got some, some good ideas floating around. It's just a matter of moving forward with them in the next few months. It's an input. So just just for information. This right here. Yeah. It is, and it's some you'll, you'll probably see some events that take place this year. Right. New right. additions. Right. We've been working on that, and they'll be coming forward. And and I think uh, sometime during this year we'll be talking to you about what might be done in some existing facilities downtown. Should there should we look at uh, uh, how maybe we make it use the public space in a different manner? To provide opportunities for, for different uh, activities. Pretty neat part about downtown, if you notice the picture in front, you saw that one. Uh, it, it's a popular place for car shows. It, 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 it's, it's a, it, it really gives you a chance to, to bring a different group of people in almost 
each event. Um, and uh, what we believe is it's a real opportunity. Well, I think that for the ones of us that were running in the election this time, I think that was a topic of conversation in downtown and the revitalization of downtown. This is a good start in moving in the right direction. And hopefully we can continue and gain some momentum and do more than less. So we appreciate that very much. Uh, Thank you. With the inclement weather, we're going to get through to record time in the 19 years. Get you out of course, it's dark. Uh, Thank some you. Other functions. Uh, um, each work session, we have a report made by, by the department, and so far we've done all the internal operations. So tonight, uh, Aaron Noble and some of his staff members are here from Human Resources tonight to help to, to give you an overview of what, what that was involved in that operation. Aaron? Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. We're delighted to be with you this evening to talk to you a little bit about what we do in human resources. Pleased to have with me this evening and participating in this discussion. Lee Shore, who is one of our HR specialists, Quentin Baker, who's, Baker, who's our safety director, and then Sheila Twayman, as you all know, who's our occupational health nurse. So we will not delay this any longer than we have to because we know we all need to do. But uh, our HR staff pretty much consists of the following individuals, in addition to Terry Taylor, our other HR specialist, and Brenda Page, who's our part time office assistant. So, what is human resources? Basically, it's management of processes of an organization's workforce involving attraction, selection, and training, reward of employees, providing training for employees to fulfill their potential and also to meet the organization's needs and also to ensure the organizations in compliance with all federal and state employment and labor laws. How do we go about finding new people? Well, there are a myriad of sources that we use, uh, out in our job listing, our website. We still maintain a phone line where people can call in and get a, 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 verb, a vocal announcement of the jobs we have available. It's updated every Monday. We also post our positions in the municipal annex. Still use the local newspaper that has, you know, that's faded to a great degree in the employment recruitment process, but still it's a tool. Professional associations and also online job hunting sites such as Monster and what have you. This is the trend of the applications that we've received in HR that you can see that tends to be going down. And that mirrors uh, findings by the U.S. Department of Labor, which hopefully indicates that uh, our economy is getting a bit better, people are finding other employment opportunities, and we're not getting as many people coming uh, to apply for us as, as we once did. Plus the fact, we're very fortunate that, for the most part, employees tend to come to the city and stay for a relatively long period of time. So that somewhat makes us an employer of choice. As far as what we do with each application when we receive it, we log it for EEOC purposes, and we maintain each application for a period of five years. Once an applicant is chosen, we run background and reference checks. Full-time and some part-time employees are required to have a physical as a requirement of pre-employment process for the job. Then we complete the federal I-9 form once the individual is hired. Now, applicants who are not chosen, either they are notified in writing of their status or in some situations, and normally this is the case for individuals who are actually interviewed for the position, they will receive a phone call notifying them of their status. Okay, so how many workers do we have? Currently, we have 554 full-time employees, 482 part-time employees, and that does fluctuate slightly throughout the year, but roughly we operate um, a little over 1,000 employees throughout the year. Um, every single one of these employees is served by the Human Resources Department. Now, we put in your handout packet a graph that indicates the number of full-time and part-time employees broken down by department so that you could get an idea of the makeup of each department. As you can see, recreation has a very large part-time employee uh, to full-time employee ratio. <laughs> HR is also responsible for policy and record keeping. We maintain and administer all personnel policy, and we provide copies of this policy to all employees. <clears throat> when policies are added or updated, we do a training or retraining of all staff on the new employees, so we're all working off the same policy. We also keep personnel files in HR for every single employee that contains pertinent information about the employee's work history here at the city. 
We are very proprietary about that information and those records do not leave our office. However, we do get requests for public information from the media and the public, and we do release anything that is uh, covered under the state sunshine laws upon request. Uh, we do get some from the media, but we get a lot from other municipalities who are looking for uh, organization information, trying to see where they are in comparison to other cities their size or maybe their admin position that we have, and they kind of want to see what is that job description, what do we pay those people, and then we are also responsible for annual reports to different agencies, both federal and state. Some HR services we provide to departments and employees is a new heart orientation once a month. Um, all pay increases and garnishments for taxes or child support, those are all keep in HR. Um, we, we administer all these performance appraisals as far as the paperwork for every full-time employee. We assist department heads with discipline, conflict, and grievance issues. And of course, we investigate all sexual harassment and discrimination claims. We assist with FMLA, the administration of it, and tracking that time. And then on July 1st of every year, we go in and we, um, we adjust any overages that people have uh, as far as their paid leave goes. We assist with the employee picnic and the service awards every May. And then in conjunction with occupational health, we do a health fair every October at Fairchild. As far as career development is concerned, we do have a tuition assistance program which has been in place with the city since probably the early 90s. <coughs> Currently, we pay $300 of the employee's tuition costs straight up. Then there's a 50-50 match for all additional expenses, all tuition related, until the city reaches a maximum payout of $900. And as far as the skills development curriculum, this is something I've discussed briefly with her. I was hoping we can continue to explore and put in place maybe by the uh, start of the new budget year. But with the number of employees that we have who are retirement eligible continuing to grow, we could easily see a, <coughs> excuse me, a void and individuals ready to move up to positions of greater responsibility. So what we'd like to do is actually put together a skills development curriculum where we would provide high potential employees with supervisory skills to prepare them for the next position in line for them. A key piece of that is helping to develop their writing skills and a lot of the employment literature, one of the major deficiencies in managers today is their ability to write effectively, so we're going to want to help them address those issues. And then partner with those agencies in the community that we can, such as Alabama Community College, helping <coughs> some of our employees who do not have a high school diploma or the GED to attain that, and continue to work with ACC on their various uh, certificate programs. HR also publishes two newsletters for employees. We have the Wellness Connection, which is published bi-monthly from the Wellness Committee. And we have Human Resources News, which is published quarterly for the HR department. And these are emailed to all city employees and placed on the internet. We also have two deferred compensation plans that city employees can pay into voluntarily. They, well, we can take out a good check, whatever they choose, and we send it to Prudential or ICMA for the 457. And when they want that to increase or decrease or stop or whatever, they come to HR and we help them with that, fill out that paperwork and get that done. And then we assist retiring employees in filing for retirement benefits through the state. And now we will turn it over to Sheila Trader. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Um, I will be very brief because I know everybody wants to get out here and home on time. Um, I just wanted to talk to you very briefly about our clinic. As you can see, our physician is Dr. James Strickland. He works with us about 25 hours per week. I am Sheila Trawick. I'm a registered nurse certified in occupational medicine. We have Ann Dobbins, who is a registered nurse contract from Alamance Regional Medical Center, and Allie Fetter, who is a registered medical assistant who helps us with things in our clinic. We have a part-time uh, receptionist, Kristen Kett. Um, I won't read that to you, but occupational medicine is a specialty services that um, focuses on prevention, promotion, and restoration of health. Um, we see, in our clinic, we see full-time employees and covered spouses on our insurance. We see retirees that are covered on our insurance, plus their covered spouses. 
all part-time employees and dependents ages 18 to 26. So that means that just about every single person who has been at the city of Burlington has come through our clinic at some time or another. Um, some of the things we do in our clinic, we do complete physicals for our folks. We did approximately 653 of those last year. In addition to the office visits that we have, which can range from um, chest pain to sinus infections to strep throat. We deal with illness, injury prevention. We do all types of testing in our office, like oh, let's see, we do EKGs, we do hearing testing, we do pulmonary function testing, just to name a couple of those. Um, labs, we do about, last year we did approximately 1,200 different types of labs in our office. As you can see, our clinic visits have gone up, and this past year we did 4,895 face-to-face -face visits in our clinic. That does not count the number of phone calls that we triage and handle over the telephone, nor the emails that we respond to. Um, these are the areas we focus on with managed care, and you can see how we've done pretty well and increased over this last year, except for one area with the tobacco cessation. So we're working very, very hard on that to try to make that a little bit better. I would like to say that approximately 35% of our population has hypertension, 25% has issues with cholesterol, uh, approximately 35% are overweight or obese, 5% have some issue with their blood sugars, and about 25% of our population use tobacco in some sort of form. So that means we've still got a lot of work to do. We've come very far, but we've got a long way to go. Um, some additional services we deal with. Um, we assist HR with FMLA management. We handle all the workers' compensation management in our office. Um, we are very active and continue to be active with our wellness activities and our wellness council. We follow disability management. Um, we work very closely with safety and environmental health, and we do quite a bit of education, and that varies greatly. Uh, one on one and in instructional classes. And I will just leave you with this quote, quote from the CDC. And just remember workplace health programs <coughs> lead to change and chain lead, change leads to effect in the bottom line. So that's all I have to say. And with that, I'll turn it over to Clinton Baker. Thank you, Sheila. Uh -huh. Good evening, Council. I'm Clinton Baker, safety director here for the city of Burlington. One thing that uh, I noticed Lisa had in her presentation, she had public safety. Police department, that's public safety. Well, what I do is occupational safety. Two separate, two separate areas here. This is a brief skeleton of what I do. Of course, we cross train a lot, but uh, some of the things I do, policy and procedure development. Uh, I provide a service, if you will, by providing mock OSHA inspections through all the city facilities. I've spent enough time with compliance officers over the years that I can, I can pull a few of those off. I provide project and plan reviews for engineering, water resources, water sewer, uh, screening contractors, that sort of thing. We, here with the city, we have a multi-tier safety program, safety committee program. Provide incident investigations for some of the more severe incidents we have. Uh, employee training. Um, we all have to do some training here and there. OSHA actually requires us to provide certain amounts of training, whether it be a one-time or an annual or triangle type trainings. Uh, to go along with those trainings, uh, I develop lesson plans. That, that way, if somebody else needs to provide the training to their people, I'm not available or whatever, then it's, you know, you basically pick up a packet, PowerPoint, a little bit of knowledge, and run with it. Record keeping. We all hate record keeping, but uh, I have a lot of record keeping to do, along with the OSHA 300 logs and the summaries and then all the reports and submittals that I have to do, both state and federal. So that kind of goes along with the, uh, with the fun part of my job, if you will. I mentioned safety committees. We have that multi-tier structure, which we have a, as a governance group or a guidance group, we have a central safety committee. Well, what does that do for us? That, that basically, uh, provides an outlet for this lower departmental or divisional safety committees 
to submit information up to and up through these committees. And sometimes it goes back the other way in reverse as well. But these meetings generally occur once a month. Uh, we have the Central Safety Committee over there in Nolan's Public Work Conference Room. We have it the second Tuesday of every month at 10 o'clock in the morning. And if you, if you got nothing better to do, we'd love to have you come out. These departmental safety committees, they're everywhere. Yeah. Public Works has one. Police has one. We, we have one over here in this building. Rather than having individual departments, the divisions, we all kind of get together and have one committee for this building. But that's pretty much how the safety committee structure works. Now, to kind of wind it all up, where have we, where have we been? Where are we, where are we able to pull off? Really and truthfully, in the last four or five years, we've accomplished about a 30% reduction in OSHA recordable injuries and illness cases, with a 17% increase in total number of employees. So employee numbers have gone up, injuries, illnesses have gone down. That's very good. We generally average pretty close to about 1,000 contact hours every year uh, providing training, safety training, safety related training. So some of it is, some of it is you know, individual coaching, but most of it's in a classroom setting type of thing. Um, I got an uh, email from Eric Hilton just yesterday wanting to set up your training, so no one's for your year there. Um, safety policy training presentations, thanks to Rachel back there, uh, we've got them up on the website. Uh, you know, I develop them, send them to her, and she graciously uploads them there. And one interesting thing here, and I, one of our insurance carriers have provided this one here, uh, we're pretty much 25, we're in the lower 25% little quadrant of their graph of injury and illness cases for both frequency and severity <coughs> among cities our size. It's, it's pretty good to be in that bottom corner there. So, you know, uh, without any other questions or comments, uh, I would like to leave it there and to close it up for us. So just in summation, we think that this quote from Leo Lee Coker pretty much symbolizes you know, what we try to do with HR. We give you people, we let them know what the expectation is as far as employment and maintaining our workplace policies. We communicate with them on a regular basis, and we motivate and reward them. And the city's in the best position possible to have a workforce that can meet organization goals and also propel the organization into the future. So with that being said, uh, we open the floor for any questions you may have about anything that you've seen or heard this evening. We'd like to have this opportunity to present before you. Question or comments? We have a, like a yearly corporate compliance training for employees. Do you do that periodically when you need it? Well, pretty much so. A lot of that time within the departments, and as far as putting together this uh, development curriculum, we will address a lot of the specific needs that we have with the organization as well as that. Uh, any other questions? The one challenge here is the, the number of part-time employees is just is, is, is really more than that as well. Those guys are take significant training for injuries. Uh, that's a, that's a different different ball game for us. Uh, we have to have. That's the way we save money, guys. You know, we, we need bodies at times, and that, that's really really important. Uh, one thing Aaron did mention about the diversity. I will say this is that. We often talk about manufacturing going away. Um, Frank today told me we only have eight employees in an organization that have more than 30 years of experience as we speak. We've got uh, 300 uh, with less than 10 years. We have a, a number of employees is when the textile started really cutting back in the late 80s who came to work with us in the middle of their careers. So we're seeing some employees who came at 35 and 40 and now reaching the 60 and 65 age group, uh, which is a, a little different challenge than we've dealt with in the past uh, in terms of their physical abilities. Some of us as we get old tend to have less of a physical ability than we once had. So it's, it's, a, it's a different, interesting dynamic. Uh, a little part, of course, is with the young, the 20s uh, age group. Uh, we've been told that they can change jobs seven times in their career. So I'm not so sure what the uh, the long-term employee situation will look like. Uh, that will be interesting as we, as we go forth in terms of recruiting. We'll see. 
think the biggest concern that one would have with some of that, some of your comments would simply be you're looking at some history too. Yeah. And that's, 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 that's very important to an organization. And I would, I would follow up and say that I deal with Sheila probably more than anybody else in the organization. <laughs> and I'll tell you, that, that group of people over there, they're outstanding, and I appreciate what you do for the city. That's the entire staff. They're outstanding. So. Harold. Uh, guys, budget time is here. Uh, I would ask you for, for comments here in the next few weeks. Uh, obviously, with what you have given us uh, direction on, that we know we've got is, is uh, really four areas. Uh, we know a fire station sick construction will begin, um, and then, of course, the funding and operation of that becomes a factor. Uh, if some money's been put aside, but that's certainly a factor. We uh, lose uh, six officers in the COPS program this year by, by the, uh, that agreement. We have to fund those guys another year. That's a, uh, 10 months of that year would be money that we'll have to find. Uh, we've had certain conversations actually, we need to look at what our interest is in minimal housing, uh, where we go forward with there. Uh, and of course, uh, public transportation, where, that, where that's gonna be at and decisions made on that. Um, there are four uh, fairly substantial areas which, uh, uh, through our notes, we've been made aware of and, and we'll be working on. We, we have already begun to look at revenues. Uh, we had conversations uh, with, the, with the state senator this week concerning the privilege license and where that may be going. That is, that it seems to not to be impacting 14, 15, but the 15th of July 1, 15. There will be some changes in the privilege legislation, I can assure you, um, uh, as that, that comes forward. And as you recall, our privilege license over the years, the council is based on the concept of uh, it was gross receipts, where the small business people in the community paid very little. Your big boxes paid much more. Uh, there appears to be a movement in Raleigh to, uh, to change that concept. I was going to bring this up tomorrow, and since you brought it up tonight, though. I met um, in Friday with the Metro Mayor's group and uh, Governor McCourty spoke in one of three issues, that is one of three issues. And if we go from uh, $25 to a small business to, a, to $100, for example, the max was 100, up to 100 was that on the privilege tax. We're gonna lose, lose a stream of revenues that's important to this group. And what that, the information from that discussion with the other mayors was about property tax increase to replace that revenue stream. So it would be, I think in our best interest to talk to Senator Gunn, Representative Ross and Rydell about how we feel about that. And maybe we need to have a discussion about that in a work session or a council meeting about how much revenue that means to the city of Burlington because there's only a few ways you can have revenue streams. and. Uh, you know what they are, so we need to be thinking about that. Also, Mr. Uh, Patterson and I'll be attending the next Jordan Lake uh, Rule Minute meeting in the legislature. Patterson will be presenting um, in reference to what our uh, efforts have been at this point. Um, and I think I emailed you Friday uh, Mr. Uh, Lane's response to the Deer uh, uh, request concerning line break, force main break into each plant that was uh, finalized and sent, and sent in. Uh, I believe uh, tomorrow night, if I'm not mistaken, we have a, an extension on the contract with each plant to replace the force main line on site. Uh, also, we've got the final contract agreement to begin the final phase of the review work on the first, on, on part of the uh, Palm River interceptor line so that's uh, will be uh, will be ongoing work as we speak this spring in those two areas. Any other questions for Harold? I appreciate y'all coming out in the weather. Thank you. Just want to make sure y'all drive safely home.